Welcome to another Friday Functions video. This week, the function that we're going to focus on is the group by function. And I'm going to show you how you can use that in your galleries and in your apps in order to group items from your data. So I'm going to use SharePoint as an example today. I happen to have a list called Change Orders. And we want to imagine that my job is to create an app that shows the change orders to, to the resident engineer. It can, they can open up their phone and look at the change orders in the list. And they want to see them grouped by drawing number. And this is because they work on their change orders based on what the changes are to, this, to the drawings that have been delivered to the contractors. So in this particular case. So in SharePoint, that's an easy thing to do. And I just wanted to show you. If you go to a column that you want to group by in SharePoint, and you can see this, this list is not grouped by anything. It's just all the items. But if I go over to the drawing number column and I drop down that little arrow, I can tell SharePoint to group it by drawing number. So this is what I love about the modern experience. It makes things so easy. But in this case, um, we want to imagine that I've been given that task for a mobile app. So I'm trying to make an app for my resident engineers that helps them to see what change orders have been submitted, but grouped by drawing number. So we're going to do that together. I can put this back to the way it was because we don't need this to change, or I could have saved it as well. So I'm going to start by just connecting to this data into this list. So I'm going to go to Power Apps and I'm going to create a blank app. And it doesn't matter. This works in both um, phone format and tablet format without a problem. And we'll just let this load. Now, what I'm going to focus on is the group by function, which is a function that helps us to specify the column we want to group by. And then we give it a name. In other words, we give it any name we want so that we can use that name in our functions throughout the um, item that we're creating. So I'm just waiting for this to load. We'll give it a few seconds. It's getting things ready. And then my circle of hope is spinning, which gives me the confidence and plus the, the canvas behind here that this is just about finished. And now the first thing I'm going to do is add my connection. Now I could have done this as app from data. I could have also done it as a customized form. I've just decided to use a regular app for this. If I had done it as a customized form, of course I would have had to add a gallery to the form because for customized custom forms by nature don't have galleries in them. They are just for that list item, but you can always add one. Okay, so I'm gonna look for my SharePoint connection here. I know I have one. Um, I'm going to select that and then I paste the URL of the SharePoint site. It's going to show me all the lists from that site. Now, by the way, if you want to use a document library in your data or say a calendar or some other type of um, app that is on SharePoint, then you can do that. You just have to type the name of it down here into this blank box. By default, only custom lists show up here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose change orders as my data connection, and I'm going to connect. And this gives me all the data in that list. If I wanted to get data from other lists, I could do that as well. Okay, so now, now I'm going to um, just add a flexible height gallery. And you'll see the reason I'm adding a flexible height gallery is because it's possible that as I group things, some rows will be taller than others, you know. So if I have only one uh, change order for a particular drawing, it won't need to be as tall as one that maybe a drawing has six change orders. Okay, so I'm going to click Flexible Height Gallery. And as soon as I do that, it's going to ask me what data do you want to link to this? And I can go ahead and, and link the change orders. But basically, I'm going to go back to my formula bar here because I want to do the group by magic, right? So I'm going to close my panel and I'm going to go up here and edit this items property. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say group by simply as that. When I open my paren, if you look up here, you'll see the syntax. So it wants the source first, which is still the change orders, then a column, 
then what column name do you want to group by? Okay, in my case, I want to group by drawing number. Okay, and then finally, what name would I like to give my drawing? My drawings that are grouped, right? I'm going to just call them drawings, right? Or I can call it drawing group. But I'm going to call it drawings just to keep my formulas short, right? This has nothing to do with SharePoint. This is my decision on what this group will be called, okay? So now that I've got that group by function up there, again, it is just group by. If you click after the first paren in a function, it will always tell you the syntax and it will tell you that the source, what the source needs to be. In this case, it needs to be a table or collection because how would you group something that's just one item, right? Okay, so now what I've, it tells me the source and I put that as the list name. The column name is the column I wanna group by and the group name is drawings, okay? Now, because we added a blank gallery, I need to add some controls here, right? So first I'm going to go into my pencil icon. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see better. And I'm going to add a label in here. Okay. Now the label is going to default to the, the drawing number, right? You can see that at the top. I'm going to use the home menu here to align this at the top of the screen. So I'm just going to do align align top so that that label is always at the top now drawing numbers will never take up more than one line so I don't need to worry about auto height here okay now I I want to add another control and the control that I add now will include that grouped list of change orders so it's important that I add a control that can handle more than one item so I could use a lot of different kinds of controls. I could use a drop down control. I could use a combo box control. I could use a list box, a check box, or anything that takes more than one item. I can't use a text box though, because it only has uh, one uh, item. I can't use a label. It's not enough, right? It's a single, it's only a single return value because this is a group of things. I need something that will handle more than one item. So in this case, I'm just gonna take a list box. Again, I could take a drop down. There's so many things that handle multiple items. Now, once that's on there, I'm going to make it thinner. That's all I'm going to do. Now, I'm actually going to do all of this relative. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and choose width. And the width of this, I want to be one half of this template width. So I'm just going to say the gallery name, which is gallery one. We should rename it probably. Dot template width. And then I'm going to divide that width by two. Okay. And then just move it over here. Okay. Now what's going to be in here is my, uh, you know what? I probably can make it a little bit wider. So I can either use my mouse and be happy with that width, or I can change this to template width divided by three. I mean, divided by four, maybe gallery one template with let's divide it by 1.5 yeah I like that okay so fine now in here this list box needs to have our drawings remember we named our group drawings so I'm going to go to the items property of the list box and change it from being a sample uh, list of one two three to being my um, items so since I am in the template of TF190. I'm in the template um, of the of the gallery drawing numbers. I can use this item here and say drawings, right? And because what I have done is I've named my group drawings. Now, what do I want to see from drawings? I want to see the title. Okay. And so now you get the items that will show that are in that drawing title. Now we had a flash of the screen, but let's just continue working and we'll come back to that. I'm going to do height. I'm going to go into my height, my uh, height property. Where did that go? Right here. And I'm going to change the height of this to be um, count rows. So I, what I want to do is I want to count the rows of my drawings, right? So this item drawings, sorry, this item dot drawings. 
which will actually figure out how many rows are needed for this list box. Then I'm gonna times it by what I want the row height to be, which is approximately six pic pixels. And what I left out is telling it that I'm, I'm using the height. Um, is that right? This item drawings. There we go. I don't need that last print. So I'm taking this item drawings and I'm counting the rows and then I'm timesing that by 60 so that each list box is only the height it needs with each row being 60 pixels high. Now if I run this, this should just work and we are not seeing the text in there. So hold on, let me see if I can adjust this. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna go into my label my list box and I'm going to check my items property because it did pop up for a second and it went away so let's try this items drawings dot let's see if we can get a drawing number here dot let's see let's get the Let's get the title. Let's see. Okay, so now everybody sees these, right? Let's run the app. And now we're good, except for our title's a little bit big. But for the most part, we're looking good. I think I need to make 60 more. It needs to be more than 60. And we need to check our template height, which, well, well no, we don't, because we've got a flexible height gallery. So let's go back and tweak on this a little bit. One thing I noticed is I don't like the border on my list box. So I can go in here, go back to home, where I can get my little friendly PowerPoint-like menus and just say uh, remove the border thickness and or set the border style to none so that we have no border around this. And then let me check the height again. Let's look at the height. Okay, that's correct. Let me see, should I make it a little bit more? I think what I should do is make the font size smaller. So let's go ahead and make this font size like uh, 14. And I think I'm happy with that. And then run it. And now we've got our groups working. So if you notice very carefully, this row is thinner than this row because they have they don't have the same thing, right? Now, um, the other thing I want to do is kind of like make this, I think I want to make the height a little bit different. So I'm going to go back down to height just because I'm being picky, picky. Let's make it, what happens if I make it 50? What does that look like? Even 40. Let's see how that looks. And I think this looks good. Okay, so you can notice the second group is a little bit taller than the first group and so on. Now what I might want to do is align the uh, this label with the top of this label or something because they look a little bit off. You see that they look a little off. So uh, being that my drawing numbers are short, I could do this and align these two. So I'm using control click to highlight both and then I'm aligning them top. Okay, now they are aligned. Um, and then if I run this, this may look a little better. Okay, it might be a little tight. I think I actually like it the other way. But you can see I'm being picky about where everything sits. But this is very easy to do. I can even set it to have an X, a Y property that starts it in one place. You know, maybe I'll put it drastically lower. That way it doesn't look like it's slightly off. It'll actually work better. And there you go, you know. Um, I need to make my gallery taller because we have it short. So let me go full screen. Let me select my gallery. Let me let it fill the whole page. And of course, I could always go up here and put my title of my pretty image or whatever it is that I want to do to prefix this. But that's how easy it is to group by stuff. Super easy. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and don't hesitate to go ahead and set on select statements on here. Um, you can definitely set on select statements for your list items. You can all, this is, this is such a great opportunity to do a whole bunch of different things, but I just wanted to let you know, 
group buy is possible. Put some comments in the video below to see if you wanted other things to do with the grouping fun with the group by function because maybe I haven't thought of the idea that you've thought of and I'd be glad to do another Friday function video for that. You all have a great weekend and I'll be seeing you at the next Friday functions video.